Hi, good morning everybody. It is great to be here in New York City and it is great to be here representing Yummy Plants and hopefully to help give you some wonderful tips that make it really easy for you to add more plants into your lifestyle. So as Marty mentioned, um, switching to a plant-based lifestyle was a miracle for me. I was a competitive figure skater. I had a terrible knee injury. I did everything Western medicine said you should do, surgery, cortisone, physical therapy, and I just didn't heal. And after several years of just being very frustrated, I was searching and searching and searching for different things that I could do. And I read about a study in Scandinavia where these people switched to a plant-based diet and reported something like an 80% reduction in their knee pain. And I thought, gosh, I have nothing to lose. I'm gonna try this. And I did it, and within a couple weeks, uh, I was feeling much better, and within five weeks, I was back on the ice after having hardly been able to walk for five years. And it was a miracle. I had my life back. I could dance, and I could skate, and I had the life that I'd always had, and it was such a miracle and changed my life that I wanted to create a fun, welcoming place where people could come and learn more about it and ask questions and help each other and share what works for them. And that is what Yummy Plants is. It's a community for you. And um, I'm really excited to be here today and to share some tips with you that have worked for me that make it really easy to follow a plant-based lifestyle at home, uh, outside of the house, at work. Um, out, out on dates, out on client meetings, and just to make it very workable in your life. And I do just want to say, um, it's not an all or nothing thing. Do the best you can with what you have. Make the changes that feel right for you. And uh, little by little, I think you'll see as you're feeling better and better that it becomes easier and easier to switch to a totally plant-based diet. So um, a vegan or a plant-based diet is basically a vegetarian diet with no egg, no dairy, essentially no animal products. And if you've been thinking about switching, um, you're not alone. There's three million people in the United States who are following a plant-based diet. Um, some of them are really famous, people you know like President Bill Clinton, Leah Michelle from Glee, many, many uh, uh, vegan athletes and uh, Hollywood actors. It's a really exciting time and people are really seeing the benefits of a vegan diet. And there's so many reasons to switch. But one of the major reasons is health benefits. Dr. Neil Barnard, who's the president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, talks about how we can actually uh, reverse diseases like type 2 diabetes and heart disease, and I myself healed from chronic joint pain just by switching to a plant-based diet. It's amazing. It's something that you can try, there's no negative effects, and it can really help you heal. So I'd like to talk about some common concerns. When people ask me, um, what's it like to be a vegan? How do you follow a plant-based diet? People ask me, well, how do you get enough protein? And gosh, what am I gonna put in my cereal? And what am I gonna put in my coffee? And what am I gonna do when I go out? And these are some things that are, are definitely concerns that we need to think about. But hopefully by the end of my talk today, you'll see really easy ways to incorporate this into your life. So the four things I want to make sure we cover are discovering easy substitutions, specifically for dairy and for eggs, how to stock your vegan pantry and your fridge, how to learn tips that make it easy for you not only at home, but when you're out in the world to make it workable at work and out at, with friends at restaurants, and we're going to make it really fun. So when people are looking at how do they remove dairy, common concerns are how do I get enough calcium? What can I eat that tastes good? And oh my gosh, how can I give up cheese? And I have some answers that are gonna hopefully make it really easy for you to do these things. So first of all, let's talk about calcium. I know many of us grew up thinking that dairy is really the only source of calcium, but it's just not true. There are a lot of calcium content in plants. And in fact, on February 25th, the Harvard School of Public Health had an article on their website that said dairy is not only, not only the only source of calcium, but not necessarily the best source of calcium. There is a lot of calcium in bok choy, in broccoli, in kale, in green leafy vegetables, and it doesn't have any of the effects, of the side effects that are negative that are associated with dairy, like high fat content and cholesterol. So there really are good plant-based sources of calcium. Also, there's calcium fortified drinks out there, like orange juice, and uh, most dairy-free beverages, almond milk, soy milk, coconut milk, rice milk, oat milk, all of these have calcium in them. 
And finally, there's supplements that are completely plant-based for calcium. I myself take a calcium supplement from New Chapter that's made from algae. So there are plant-based calcium supplements out there if you are concerned about not getting enough calcium in your diet. So really, calcium completely from plants is possible and it's doable. So let's talk about what tastes good, right? Because we want to make life fun and good and enjoy what we're doing and enjoy what we're eating. And there really are so many delicious plant-based dairy substitutes out there. Common bases tend to be rice and oat and soy and coconut and hemp milk. And hemp milk does not have THC in it. Um, it does have great omega-3, 6, and 9. And uh, you will never have a problem with drug testing from drinking hemp milk. So I just want to be clear about that. Um, and the, the common brands for um, non-dairy products that you'll see in most stores are so delicious, dairy-free. That's a product that I absolutely love. It made my transition to vegan very, very easy. Um, there's Silk and Tempt and uh, White Wave and so many different products out there. And a lot of these have shelf-stable packaging now where you, if you don't have these things in an area near you, I'm sure you do here in New York City, but um, if you don't happen to have these near you, you can order online and it'll come right to you and it's shelf-stable until you open it. So that's an option. There are non-dairy yogurts that are made out of soy and coconut milk and almond milk, and these are delicious. Uh, one thing I would recommend that you do is check the back for casein, which is a protein in dairy products, and a lot of people have an inflammatory response, which shows up as chronic joint pain or migraine headaches. So double check, a lot of soy yogurts do have casein in them, and you want to make sure that your product doesn't if you're really looking to eliminate that from your diet. C-A-S-E-I-N. And usually it says there's 2% or less. But if you are having an inflammatory response to casein, you're not going to want any in there. Um, there is vegan butter. I only know of one brand that tastes good, and that's a brand called Earth Balance. And uh, I don't work for Earth Balance, but it, it really tastes delicious. It's not like the old margarines we grew up with. Um, you can eat it plain. It tastes great on bread. It's a one-to-one -one substitution for margarine and butter. Um, so really, that's a fabulous product. It comes in sticks, it comes in tubs, whipped. There's a bunch of different varieties. I use that at home and it's fabulous. Um, and then there are ice creams, both raw and non-raw. There's uh, coconut milk ice cream, there's almond milk ice cream, there is soy ice cream, there's rice ice cream, so you don't have to give up your ice cream. And uh, there's raw vegan ice cream as well that's made out of cashew nuts. So there are so many options now. I think. Now is a great time to be thinking about making these changes in your diet, for your health, for the planet, for everything, because there's so many products, so many people are interested in making these changes in their lives, and the market has responded. There's great products that taste good, that make you feel good, that are easily available, and it, it really is easy. Once you start looking for these things, you'll find that they're everywhere. It's pretty amazing. So let's talk about cheese alternatives. I know that can be one that's hard to give up. And I'm here to tell you that there really are good cheese alternatives. These are the brands that I know of that taste good. There's a lot of substitutions out there. But Daya, Teas Cheese, and Cheesely actually do taste good, and they do melt. Um, you can also make your own homemade vegan cheese sauces. There's a recipe for vegan mac and cheese on Yummy Plants that's fabulous. We make it with so delicious coconut milk, uh, nutritional yeast, and even my friends who aren't vegan love it and ask me to make it for them. It's fabulous. You can make sort of a French sauce with mustard and all kinds of spices, and it's fabulous. And I do want to show you that the vegan cheese really does melt. Look at that. Isn't that yummy? It's a, home, it's a pizza made with, uh, I think that one's made with Daya. But it, it, these things really do melt, and they taste fabulous, and you can keep it at home and make pizza bagels or whatever you want to do, melt it on top of things. It's a great thing to have around. So let's talk about a, a little bit about eliminating eggs. We think of, or probably grew up thinking of, eggs as a common ingredient for cooking and baking. And there are a lot of other binders out there that will work. And depending on the recipe, it will depend on what you'd want to use and the texture. But you can use bananas, you can use applesauce, you can use flax seeds mixed with water, you can use uh, apple cider vinegar and baking soda. Uh, there's lots of recipes that have good binders. And a great thing to keep in your pantry is something called Energy, which is just a dry, shelf-stable item that you mix with water, and you can use it pretty much for any egg substitute. So that's a really easy one that you can just pretty much use for any recipe. 
So that's a really easy, easy, easy way to switch eggs out of your diet, especially for baking. And I'm only gonna spend a couple minutes talking about protein because people think that it's a big concern getting enough protein, but it's really not. According to the CDC, people only need about 46 to 56 grams of protein a day. And I have one really quick sample menu that I got from the Vegetarian Resource Group that shows it's 73 grams of protein. So there's a lot of information on the web about sample menus. Plants do have a ton of protein. There's lentils and beans and tofu and peas have seven grams of protein. There's really, really good options out there. So getting protein really isn't a reason, getting enough protein really isn't a reason to say, I can't do this. It's really easy, you can do this. There's so many options out there for good plant-based protein sources. So it really is easy. And I have a quick, Quick and easy tips for stocking your pantry. Uh, lots of fresh fruits and veggies. I think we've all heard a lot about the benefits of eating raw food and the enzymes. And obviously, we want to eat as many fresh fruits and veggies as we can. And uh, vitamin B12, that's one thing that we actually don't get if we're on a totally plant-based diet. You can get a little bit from nutritional yeast. But physicians do recommend that we just take a su uh, supplement just to make sure. And that is something I would recommend that people check with their healthcare practitioners. But um, I take that and I, I've read from many sources, including Dr. Barnard from the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, that we should all take that if we're following a vegan diet. Um, the energy egg replacer, as well as the other ones like the flaxseed, you can keep that in the fridge. You can uh, keep the apple cider vinegar and the baking soda. Those are just nice things to have on hand when you need them. Vegan bouillon cubes, the only one I know of that's organic and vegan that they sell in my area is Rapunzel. There may be other products in your area that, uh, that do follow those qualifications, but I find that's a really great thing to make with rice or quinoa or kamut or millet, and it just adds a lot of nice flavor. You can add some fresh herbs in there with parsley and other things, and it makes a great meal that's really quick and easy. The nut butters, peanut, almond, cashew, whatever you find in your area, it's a really good source of protein. And if you just want a quick snack, it's a nice thing to have on celery sticks or carrots or whatever you're looking to eat. Mimicream is a new product. If you have a Vitamix or a Blendtec, you can make your own nut cream, but uh, a lot of us don't have those things. So you can, there's a product called Mimicream, which is a nut-based cream, and you can just put it in your mix master and it'll make a really fabulous whipped cream. Um, Non-dairy milks, I mentioned a lot of those come in shelf-stable packaging until you open them, so they're great things to just keep in your pantry for when you need them. Especially if you have friends who are following a plant-based diet, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but it's a great thing to just keep on hand for friends and family who might be coming over to visit. Um, the vegan butter, I talked about the earth balance. Grains, uh, whatever grains work for you. There's so many different grains out there. They're great things to keep on hand. And you can make a whole bunch on the weekend and just eat them and add fresh vegetables to them so you have a nice fresh meal when you get home from work. Um, vegan sugar. I, I learned a couple years ago that not all sugar is vegan. Apparently some white sugar is strained through animal bones. Eee, that's kind of not so great. So uh, if you look for sugar that's evil, either labeled as organic or labeled as vegan, uh, you'll make sure that your sugar is not strained through animal bones. The vegan cheeses that we talked about are great things to have on hand for snacks that are yummy or just to melt on top of things. The non-dairy yogurts, the vegan ice creams, and then canned veggies for emergencies. Uh, they're a great thing to have on hand. You can add them on top of your grains or whatever else you're gonna do with them. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about things that you can do outside of your home. All the things we've talked about so far are really easy ways to switch to a plant-based diet inside your house. But what happens when you're out, you have a work dinner or you're going out on a date or you're meeting with all your friends and none of them are following a plant-based diet? What can you do? What we can do is really educate people and share how delicious these non-dairy substitutions are. So I try to always keep at work some non-dairy milk like uh, coconut milk or soy milk or rice milk, whatever it is that you like. And they make ones that are refrigerated that you can keep in the fridge or, like I said, the shelf-stable ones that you can keep in your desk until you need them. I also keep vegan better on hand because sometimes you get this great bagel day and everybody's participating and there you are and you don't have anything to eat. So it's great to just have those things on hand in your fridge at work 
and, and share. Because these things taste so good that when your colleagues taste them, um, a lot of them may decide that they want to eat these products too. I do have friends who don't follow a vegan diet, but they really like my substitutions. And there's a lot less fat, there's no cholesterol, and people have decided that they're going to start drinking those things too. So let's talk a little bit about what do you do when now you're going out. And uh, if you have the ability to choose the restaurant, it's a lot easier. There's a lot of good resources out there that can help you find a good vegan friendly restaurant. There's Happy Cow, and right here in New York City, they're super vegan. They have a really good comprehensive list. Um, on the Yummy Plant site, we actually have restaurant listings for most major cities. And um, the community is building it, so if you don't find your favorite New York City restaurant on the Yummy Plant site, please add it. We'd love to have you share it with the community. Um, but if you can check these sites, those are great options. And then there's also cuisines that tend to have a lot of vegan-friendly options. Um, Chinese food, Indian food, Mexican food, Japanese food, Ethiopian, Italian, Thai, all of those naturally have a lot of vegetarian dishes that can be made vegan really, really easily. A couple cautions, and I didn't think about this until I started following a plant-based diet myself. Um, double check, because sometimes the rice can be made with chicken broth, or it has butter in it, and sometimes the pasta has egg in it, and it's just really important to check those things because you wouldn't necessarily know. And for the Indian food, sometimes it has ghee in it, which is clarified butter, and often you can have the dishes made without ghee, if you ask. So what do you do when you can't choose? Sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's uh, a work event and you can't choose or you're overruled and you don't want to make a big deal about it and you want to make sure that you have something really yummy to eat. So the first thing I would do is actually go online and check the menu for the restaurant. It could be that the restaurant that somebody else has selected is the type of cuisine that has a lot of vegan friendly options and that's great. If it's not, at least you will know in advance that this is not going to be the easiest place to go and you can start preparing. So you can check the side dishes. You might be able to make a really good meal of sides with rice and some steamed veggies. You might be able to uh, call in advance and see if you can pre-order something. I do that a lot. I have to go to a lot of work events where I don't necessarily get to choose the restaurant. And if I've looked on the menu and I think, wow, this is just really gonna be a challenge, I'll call the restaurant, not during peak hours, right? We all wanna be sensitive, we wanna help the chefs. But most restaurants are happy to cater to dietary restrictions. And I will just call the restaurant and say, hey, you know what, I'm following a plant-based diet, no egg, no dairy, I'm really clear. And I say, what, what do you have that I can eat? And if they really don't have anything, I'll say, well, is there anything you could whip up? Maybe some grilled vegetables over some rice, or uh, grilled vegetables over wilted spinach. And they usually are pretty happy to make something. And that way, it's not a big deal. You walk in, you've already prearranged what you're gonna order, and you just sit down and you just show up with your client or whoever you're meeting with and it's seamless. And that's really what we're going for. Easy ways to make this seamless in your life and I do this all the time and it really works for me. So let's talk about happy hour. You've worked all day, your friends are going out for drinks, you wanna go and you're hungry because it's the end of the day. What are you gonna be able to eat when you go out for happy hour? Well there actually are some pretty good options out there. Um, some of the ones that I've seen uh, that are pretty common are bruschetta, which is that Italian bread that has the olive oil and the garlic and the tomatoes that is vegan. There, uh, you can always get nachos without the cheese and they still have the beans and the salsa and the pico de gallo and the olives, so those are really good. You can, I've seen a lot of veggie sushi rolls these days, so that's pretty easy. And if you're in a pinch, pizza without the cheese. Normally pizza dough does not have eggs in it, and if you just get plain pizza dough with tomato sauce, it works. And if you're really hungry, it works. If you're looking at um, mixed drinks aside from just you know beer and wine, usually they have coconut milk for the pina coladas, and so they can, that can easily be a base for other cream drinks. And if you ask the bartender, they're usually pretty happy to think about what they could make that would be yummy um, with a non-dairy milk, like the coconut milk. So those are things that have worked for me when I'm out and about on the town with friends. And um, the last thing I wanna talk about is how to make it fun, right? Life is fun. And there's so many delicious things that you can eat on a plant-based diet. So many wonderful foods. And as you're walking down this path, you will see new things coming out every day. And more and more people are interested in this lifestyle. And so more and more products are coming out every single day. So let's look at some resources. 
One is Veg News. I love that magazine. You can get it in print, and there's also a website, um, vegnews.com. They have some of the coolest trends happening uh, with a vegan lifestyle. The Vegetarian Resource Group is also a fabulous resource for you. I pull a lot of things from there. And Chef Allende Howell's blog, I Eat Grass, is really fun. And Yummy Plants uh, is a great place for you. It's really a community for you to ask questions, and people will answer you, and to connect with others, and to share your journey. And um, this is just a quick shot of our recipes, and you can also add your own. If you make a variation of this recipe, you can take pictures of it and upload it and share it with others. This is our restaurant guide. Um, things I don't eat. This is my gift to the world. It is so frustrating to have to explain 10 million times what I eat and what I don't eat. I am vegetarian, no eggs, no dairy. I'm vegan, and people always ask me, would you eat eggs, can you eat butter? This way you can make your list one time and save it, and you can communicate it with the world. So you can send it to friends and family and teachers and classmates. So that's a really good way for you to save time and just do it once and send it out to the world, communicate with many. So again, um, we're a global community, really glad to be here and to share these easy tips with you. And join us. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Google+. Um, you can find us on Pinterest. Uh, we'd love to hear what's working for you, your success stories, your tips to share with the community to help make the journey easier for others. I started this community to help make this journey easier for others. And I'm hoping that you can join me on this path and make it easier for everybody else that's coming next. And that's me. It is true. I did get back on the ice. I'm totally the way I always was before. And it is because I switched to a plant-based diet. And I am so grateful. And that's what inspired me to found Yummy Plants as a community for you. Thank you so much. And those are all the people that helped us along the way. Um, I just want to give a special shout out to Rent Jungle. They helped us make the very first Yummy Plant site. And there would be no Yummy Plant site if it weren't for Rent Jungle. That's it.